So last week we showed you how John Ringling and his circus transformed the city of Sarasota to become a great travel getaway. But wait, there's more. This week we take you to southern Sarasota County. Come with us as we go to Siesta Key, Nokomis in Venice. The rhythm of the waves does something to our hurried lifestyle. A blue mind refers to the idea that our brains are wired to react positively to water. Being in or near or on the water makes us happier, healthier, more relaxed, both mentally and physically. Why any mermaid will tell you that. A big reason why Southwest Florida is so attractive. And when you add in the beautiful state parks, barrier islands, powdery white sand, and gorgeous sunsets, you have a great getaway from the stresses of life. In this video, we begin in the unspoiled wetlands of Mayaka River State Park. We then head to the currently second best beach in the USA on Siesta Key. And show you the outdoor cafes and vacation rentals of Siesta Key Village. We'll show you all the ways you can explore the region from the water, including taking a boat tour up the Intracoastal Waterway. Explore Siesta Beach and Turtle Beach. We head south to Osprey, Florida, further down the Intracoastal to the recreational area of Blackburn Pass, with a historic bridge, fishing, boat launches, and a couple of waterside eateries. Then a very scenic drive along the Gulf on beautiful Casey Key to Nokomis Beach. Then further south to the Venice Pass, showing North Jetty Beach and Snake Island. Then to the historical downtown of Venice, Florida, with Italian architecture, sidewalk cafes, and a lively downtown park with mermaids. We'll head back to the Venice Pass, this time showing you South Jetty Beach, waterside eateries, and boat tours. Then continuing 14 miles down the coast, showing Venice Beach, Brohard Paw Park, Casperson Beach, Minnesota Beach Park, and ending at the Venice Pier for sunset. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride as nature puts on the big show in South Sarasota County. When people think of Sarasota, they think of great beaches, but what a lot of people don't realize is that Sarasota has a lot of rural area east of I-75. For instance, there's Mayaka River State Park that covers 58 square miles. It's one of Florida's largest and oldest parks. We are entering through the south entrance off Highway 72. It's only $6 per vehicle or $4 for just one person. This park is dog friendly. In fact, they gave Bella a bone at the front gate. I like to call Sarasota the Boca Raton of the West Coast because of its beautiful waters, high-end shopping, and exceptionally gorgeous, unique trees. There are cabins here you can rent for $84 with fees, or RV sites $40 with fees. Includes water and electricity and sewer. This park is popular for wildlife viewing with limpkins, osprey, gators, and turtles. There's the canopy walkway, which goes between two observation towers. It's currently closed, damaged from Hurricane Ian, but they should have it fixed pretty soon. There are nature trails through a forest of arching palm trees and live oaks. On the south side of Lake Mayaka is the Mayaka Outpost, where you'll find kayak and bike rentals. A cafe and a food truck here operated by Lazy Gator Cafe. Had coffee and a breakfast sandwich was very good and prices very reasonable. A great way to start the day. You can also take a two hour boat tour, $20 for adults, $12 for children, three to 12, plus tax. They run four to five times a day. Or take a tram tour. The combo boat and tram tour is $32 for adults, $20 for children. Ran into Gretchen and Katarina here who moved to the Lakewood Ranch area a year ago. We really love it. 
people are very nice and uh, it's a tropical climate here. So we are exploring, but we are excited to see the alligators here. Now we head to Siesta Key. But just on the outside of the key, on US 41, there's a couple of boat tour options. First, there's Siesta Key Aqua Adventures. They have bumper boats, banana boats, those are fun. Or a two hour dolphin tour to Cocoa Island. $49 for adults, $39 for children 12 and under. Or a sunset cruise, $16 more. Also at Philippi Creek Oyster Bar, you can take a gondola ride with Sarasota Gondola. It's $200 for an hour ride or $350 for a two hour ride for two people with champagne. They can also do rides for up to six people. There are two bridges to get to Siesta Key. On the North Bridge, there is good fishing spots on both sides of the bridge and areas to pull off and park. Three and a half miles down the Intracoastal, the south entrance to Siesta Key is the Stickney Point Bridge, Highway 72. Same highway to the south entrance of Mayaka River State Park. On the mainland side of the bridge is a little marina village area where you can rent jet skis, pontoons, or go parasailing with Siesta Key water sports. Or take a dolphin boat tour. A sunset tour is $65 for adults, $50 for children 5 through 10. They also have a morning and afternoon cruises, about $15 to $25 cheaper. Before or after your cruise, you can enjoy a meal with a scenic view at the Boatyard Waterfront Bar and Grill, right on the waterway. We are going to cross the bridge to the Siesta Key side of the Intracoastal, to Safe Harbor Marina, where we find fun boat tours. Here is the Spearfish Grill for before or after your cruise. We are doing the Dolphin and Donut Tour, includes coffee and donuts. It is $50 for adults, $30 for children, 1 through 10. They also have a drinks and dolphin afternoon cruise, same price. Or a sunset cruise, that's $10 more. This is Roberts Bay, just south of North Siesta Key Bridge, where there are islands that are a sanctuary and breeding colony for wildlife. We pass under the North Siesta Key Bridge. The cruise is fully narrated. They point out many celebrity homes, like this is Urban Meyer's home. Why, well, there's his wife Shelley now. They are very friendly. Urban, the winner of three college national championships with the University of Florida and Ohio State. This is Curtis and Vera visiting from Long Island, New York. They love Siesta Key so much, they are coming back in a couple of weeks. Siesta Key is a three and a half mile long barrier island with a large landmass on the northern part and the island narrows to the south. It has four large public beaches, two of them with public parking and two without. We start at the north end and move south. First is Sunset Beach, the closest to Siesta Key Village. It is where the one or two story vacation rentals are at, which we'll show you in a bit. There's no facilities nor public parking here. Next is the famous Siesta Beach, the biggest beach and currently ranked number two best beach in the USA in 2022 by TripAdvisor. It has been number one multiple times, but I think that is largely due to Siesta Key as a whole. It is about a mile from the village area and has the largest public parking lot, over 900 spaces and is completely free, as well as parking along the street. There are full facilities, two concessions with food, beer, and wine, volleyball, tennis, and pickleball courts, covered pavilions. There is one ADA crossover that gets you about halfway down the beach. The third major beach in the center of the key is Crescent Beach. It is the one where the high-rise condos are at. So if you want a room facing the Gulf, this is where you want to go. It is where Highway 72, Stickney Point Road ends at. There's no public parking here. On the southern end of the key is Turtle Beach with lots of parking. Many regular visitors will tell you this is the best beach on Siesta Key, and I tend to agree. We'll show you more in a bit. I believe why Siesta Beach gets ranked so highly is because of the village and the rest of Siesta Key with all the restaurants and services and things to do. 
Now, unlike the beach area, parking around the village area is a premium. It's around $15 for a couple of hours. To get around the key, there's the Breeze Trolley. It is free. Runs between Siesta Key Village and Turtle Beach. Runs every 20 minutes during peak hours and 30 minutes off peak, seven days a week. Or you can rent some fun modes of transportation at Robin Hood Rentals, where you can rent just about anything from golf carts, kayaks, segways, and scooters. This scooter coupe is $159 for 24 hours, or $349 for three days. You can also rent hourly as well. It's really a fun way to travel around the Key. Let's show you some of the eateries at the village. We start on the east side of Ocean Boulevard. On the right side is the Fudge Factory. There's Gilligan's Island Bar and Grill in a tropical tiki setting. There is a bumble bungalow deep in the jungle, don't you know? Next to Gilligan's, Moho's Rising, highly rated for their fresh coffee brews. But you can also get bowls, smoothies, and pastries here. Now leave your home and the world you know behind you at the door. Step inside to take a ride like you never rode before. There's the lobster pot with seafood and Portuguese food. The beach club, kind of a combo sports bar and nightclub with billiards. At Avenida Madeira, there are several eateries. There's the village cafe with breakfast and lunch and patio seating. The stir fry, Thai and sushi, and the sun garden cafe for garden to table fare and popular for breakfast. Now we move to the west side of Ocean Boulevard. On Sunday mornings, there's the Siesta Key Village Farmer's Market in this parking lot. Also in this lot is Siesta Key Wine Bar, Bean Coffee, and Kilwins, where I'm going to get some coconut cream. Delicious. Next to Kilwins is the Hub Baja Grill with Pan Latin Fair in a tropical themed patio. Across the street from Hub Baja Grill is My Village Pub with a slightly elevated deck, a sports bar with over 35 TVs on the inside. Behind My Village Pub is another broken egg with a large patio covered seating. You can find us here, just disappear and take the path unknown. Join the fun with everyone. And here is one of two daiquiri decks on Siesta Key. They have lots of vegetarian and gluten-free foods, as well as seafood, and of course, creative frozen daiquiris. Okay, let's talk about vacation rentals. The ones near the village around Sunset Beach are mostly one story, with a few two or three story properties. Tropical Breeze Resort has several properties and many pet-friendly options. Everything from one, two, or three bedroom suites and an easy walk to the beach. They also offer free beach chairs, two hour bike rentals, and golf cart shuttles when available. There's a 12% resort fee and $150 per stay pet fee. There is also Siesta Key Beachside Villas with a $30 per dog per day pet fee for certain units. Also a $39 per day resort fee. Okay, now let's move to the south part of Siesta Key. Here is what they call South Village, near where Highway 72 ends at the beach. It has a few restaurants, but not nearly like the village area we showed earlier. Turtle Beach is about three miles south of Highway 72 on Midnight Pass Road. The south side of the key isn't as crowded as the north side. There's a lot more trees. Near Turtle Beach on the bay side and next to Bayfront Marina is Turtle's Restaurant with seating right on the Intracoastal Waterway. Next to the road, also Turtle Beach Grill in a tiki setting. We arrive at Turtle Beach. While the sand at Turtle Beach is maybe not as soft as the other Siesta Key beaches, there are fewer people and much better snorkeling. The beach isn't as wide here, so you are closer to the water. There is parking along the beach and a big lot adjacent to the beach. Also here, you have a little waterway between the Gulf and the Intracoastal. Makes it popular for kayaking. You can rent kayaks with ride and paddle. 
It's $30 for a single or $40 for a double or paddle boards for three hours. They also have beach cruisers, e-bikes, scooters, and beach stuff you can rent as well. You can paddle to the Jim Neville Marine Preserve, a popular boating destination, with a variety of coastal birds, plants, and wildlife. Lots of good water recreation near this part of Siesta Key. This strip of land continues south and turns into Casey Key, but the road dead ends at Siesta Key. So to get down that way, we're going to have to go back over to the mainland at Highway 72. Back over the Stickney Point Bridge, a look southward down the Intracoastal and the Boatyard Bar and Grill that we showed earlier. We head south on US 41 towards Osprey, Florida. It is about eight miles to the next bridge at Blackburn Pass to get back to the coastline on Casey Key. About midway down US 41 is the historical Spanish Point campus of Selby Gardens. It is the same price as the downtown Selby Gardens that we showed in last week's video. $16 for adults and $11 for children 5 to 17. Here it is believed to be where Sarasota's first inhabitants lived in the region dating back to 300 AD. You can dine at the Bayside Cottage Cafe. There are boat tours twice daily on Tuesdays and Thursdays from February to May for an additional fee. A look back at the south end of Siesta Key where we were just at. Casey Key Road begins at some point along the coast here north of Blackburn Pass. Blackburn Point is a great recreational area to see old natural Florida. It is not very crowded and plenty of parking. There's Blackburn Point Park with a boat and kayak launch, fishing pier, hiking trails, and is pet friendly. Across the street is the Deep Lagoon Seafood and Oyster House with elevated seating overlooking the Intracoastal Waterway. The Blackburn Point Bridge is one of the few remaining swing bridges in Florida. It was built in 1926 in Ohio and shipped to this location on the Intracoastal Waterway. It's one of two connections to Casey Key from the mainland, operated by a bridge tender who mechanically spins the bridge to let the tall boats pass. It's one way to cross. On the other side of the bridge is Island Jet Ski Tours, where you can also rent pontoons, kayaks, paddle boards, as well as wave runners. More waterside dining here at the Casey Key Fish House, a tropical tiki bar and grill serving seafood with Asian accents. Also here is the dog-friendly Casey Key Water Taxi that will take you down or up the Intracoastal from Anna Maria Island to Inglewood and across the street, covered picnic pavilions and another kayak launch. All right, now to the coastline for one of the most scenic drives in Florida. It is about 4.2 miles to Nokomis Beach, which is where the other bridge from the mainland to Casey Key is at. You can only go about 50 miles an hour for most of this road due to it being pretty narrow and winds around mansions and homes. So if you want to do the scenic drive, give yourself a little bit of time. Wow, that home has got to be worth at least a couple dozen cases of eggs. At times, the road goes right along the beach, maybe 40 feet from the water. As you approach Nokomis Beach, there are some vacation rentals. On the right side, the Golf Side Beach Club, no pets allowed here. On the left, Casey Key Resort, with pet friendly rooms. They have both these bayfront bungalows on the east side of the island, and they also have beachfront bungalows on the west side of the island, and a hotel that is on the mainland on US 41. And there's the Island House Motel on the right side just a few of several vacation rental options. Near the Albee Road Bridge on the Intracoastal is a long, narrow island that has both a boat ramp and a kayak launch with plenty of parking. There's a little park at the end with picnic tables and a fishing platform. Mm -hmm. 
Albee Road, which is the south and really the main entrance to Casey Key, dead ends at Nokomis Beach, Sarasota County's oldest public beach, and in my opinion, maybe the best. Very convenient, good facilities, nice mixture of trees and beach, outdoor showers, and a long boardwalk that extends almost the length of the beach. At the south end of the boardwalk, a little cafe with a really decent menu of tacos, burgers, hot dogs, salads, and chili cheese fries. There's volleyball courts. The sand is not as fine white like Siesta Key, but still nice. A good amount of shells and shark teeth. Across the street, a little park and playground area with plenty of parking. We head south just a mile to the Venice Inlet, where the North Jetty Beach Park is at. Lots of parking, though on weekends can get busy. Wherever we're going, I could not say for sure. Better not knowing, but it's better than before. He's the cure. Everybody swimming in sunshine. Everybody feeling fine Everybody join the fun line Ain't nobody left behind On the base side, you can rent kayaks with a jetty rentals every day except Tuesdays and Sundays. Findable what's missing But we've never missed a beach Can't you see? Everybody swimming in sunshine Everybody feeling fine Snake Island is a little island in the middle of the inlet, a haven for boaters. Contrary to the name, there are no snakes on this island. For jet ski and boat rentals, there is Cool Breeze Boat and Jet Ski Rental. Located about a mile away, near the Albee Road Bridge, they also have boat and jet ski tours. Okay, now there's no bridge to the south side of the Venice Inlet, so we're going to have to go over to the mainland, back on US-41, way over there, and through downtown Venice, right there. Then back up the coast to the south inlet area. Just want to point out another good Nokomis restaurant, Pop Sunset Grill, located on the mainland side of the Intracoastal near the bridge, next to Cool Breeze Jet Skis with a menu of classic seafood burgers and sandwiches. Look at Venice Inlet and Donna and Roberts Bay, now from US-41, as we enter the city of Venice, Florida. Here, Roberts Bay narrows into a canal that surrounds downtown Venice. Near the business US-41 bridge is Fisherman's Wharf Marina. Here you'll find Sarasota Fishing Fleet, Florida West Scuba and Charters, Venice Boat Rentals, Waves Boat Club, and the popular Dockside Waterfront Grill. A seafood eatery with dining under tiki huts overlooking the marina. The city of Venice was incorporated in 1923, was named after the city in Italy. And to make it more similar to Italy, a canal was constructed around the city, making Venice, Florida an island. This was the headquarters for the Ringling and Barnum and Bailey Circus, which is why you'll find the railroad car here at the historic Venice train depot. We showed you the northern part of the Legacy Trail in last week's Sarasota video. Well now, we are on the final mile of the 18 and a half mile Legacy Trail that ends at the Ringling and Barnum and Bailey train car. But wait, there's more. It turns into the Venetian Waterway Park Trail that runs along the canal for another eight and a half miles. Venice is one of the few carefully planned cities in the U.S. as it is artistically laid out with Centennial Park at the center of downtown. A gorgeous green space surrounded by Italian architecture, palm trees, flowers, live oaks and pines, and mermaids whom I have a lunch date with in a bit. There's regular events in the park. Like on Wednesdays, there's a live saxophonist. There's a water fountain to play in. Super tall palm trees tower along Venice Avenue, like what you might find in Venice, California, but much cleaner here than that Venice. Although it would be nice to have a bike path along the beach here, like there. Maybe the city planners can get to work on that. 
let's show you some of the options for food. There's another daiquiri deck, this one with sidewalk seating. Moving up Venice Avenue West, across from the park are where many of the eateries are at, like TJ Carney's, an old school bar and grill with an Irish theme, with dancing and karaoke. Further down, made in Italy, with wood-fired pies and other Italian eats. I'm going across the street to the Seed and Bean Market for some good healthy food. They also have CBD items. I'm having a cranberry walnut salad with goat cheese. Yum. So meet Vanessa, one of the many mermaids around Venice. She didn't talk much, but was a good listener. Well, it was time to go. I wished her the best. Before we head back to the coast, I want to show you a couple of things. Monte Andrews Arboretum, also where a lot of events are held at. It's a large park with a variety of unique trees and animal statue. There's the famous Venice Theater, one of the largest and most active theaters in the U.S. It was partly damaged during Hurricane Ian, but is still open for concerts and shows. Okay, now to the coast. Venice Avenue dead ends at Venice Beach, about a mile from Centennial Park. We're going to turn right and go back to the Venice Pass. On the right, the Venice Freedom Boat Club. We showed them in last week's video in Sarasota. Now back at the Venice Pass, the Crow's Nest Restaurant, Tavern, and Marina. I know people that really love this restaurant. A surf and turf with a dining room overlooking Snake Island and the waterway. Sea Saucer Boat Rentals has unique boats as well as pontoons. This south jetty area is Humphreys Park. Plenty of benches along the waterway. A little bar and grill with a deck right on the inlet for coffee, adult beverages, and hot dogs and burgers. You can take a boat tour with Sail Venice. A two hour sail for two people is $205. They can do up to six people for $490, plus 7% sales tax. Just like the north side of the pass, another nice long walkable jetty on this side. Parking does get full here, but you can usually create a spot somewhere. Dogs are allowed in the parking area and away from the beach, but not allowed on the beach nor on the jetty. On the golf side, a rocky coastline for a bit. Then there's a little beach area near the trees. From Humphreys Park, it's condos for a mile south to Venice Municipal Beach, which is at the end of Venice Avenue. There's a couple of smaller parking lots here, which fill up quickly on weekends, being the closest beach to downtown. There's restrooms, a volleyball court, a concession area for food called the Pilot House. Two and a half miles south of Venice Municipal Beach is the much larger beach area where the Venice Pier is at. We are going to pass that for now and show at the end during the sunset. Just a half mile south of the pier is one of the better dog beaches I've seen. Brohard Paw Park. There's two fenced in areas for dogs to roam, as well as a dog shower. A boardwalk leads out to the beach where you see the four-legged animals just having the time of their lives. They all wanted to meet Bella, the famous YouTube dog. I think dogs also have a blue mind. Another mile south is Casperson Beach. This is known as one of the best beaches for shelling and finding shark teeth. There's a long nature trail through a coastal hammock, very long boardwalks. There are both freshwater and saltwater marshes, mangroves, and tidal flats. Great for wildlife viewing. Also a canoe launch, fishing pier, lots of picnic areas with several covered pavilions, a playground, full restroom facilities with outdoor showers. The beaches along Venice are home to a large number of marine turtle nests between May and October. 
The southern two-thirds of the beachfront are left in its natural state and offer an even more secluded experience. Another 10 miles south is Manasota Beach. I kind of consider this part of the Northport, Port Charlotte area. We showed in our Charlotte Harbor video, but it is the southern end of Sarasota County, so I want to show a little of it here. Further south of here, Charlotte County and especially Lee County, that's Fort Myers and Cape Coral, you start to see some of the damage of Hurricane Ian. We will do videos of these areas within a year to show how they are rebuilding. We come back to the Venice Pier. Here you'll find Sharky's on the pier, a large seafood heavy restaurant with a tiki bar. Lots of outdoor seating, including an elevated deck overlooking the pier. There are six picnic shelter areas along the beach, two sand volleyball courts, a large pavilion, and a golf course across the street. This pier is 720 feet long and wide with plenty of room. It has a bait shop on the pier where you can get coffee and a large deck at the end where the water is 16 feet deep. It is pretty sturdy, was tested during Hurricane Ian and held up pretty good. While I'm using a DSLR for a couple of the shots, my favorite shots were from a DJI Action 3, like this shot, which I use for the majority of this video. I put a link below. Gone are the days of the Ringling Barnum and Bailey Circus. However, John Ringling's legacy continues, as Sarasota County has developed into one of the nation's top vacation getaways. A place where our blue minds finds a restorative rebalancing from the pressures of daily life. So much great water scenery. Yes, being around the water certainly has a positive impact on the mind. And when you add in the Florida sunshine and nature, it is just hard to beat. We will be doing a super long, non-narrated version of these two Sarasota videos that will show a lot of footage not seen on these videos. Also, if traveling with a dog, I highly recommend these Kurgle Dog Backpacks. Saves your dog from doing excessive walking. I put a link in the description below. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel videos across the USA for stock footage or if you would like to hire us to film your city, region, or resort, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Coming soon, we are looking to do a complete three video series of Highway A1A on Florida's East Coast. From Florida's Gulf Coast, I wish blessings to you wherever you may be.